I do like the NFC North. Um, so we had the Green Bay, where we have the Green Bay Packers, Minnesota Vikings, Chicago Bears, and everyone's America's favorite team, the Detroit Lions. Mm. Uh, Hard Knocks was legit, G. I know you caught up on all those, didn't you? Ace kneecap biter now. <laughs> He's uh, He is on one. He's a good dude. Dan Campbell's a good dude. He's a Let's coach. See, let's see what we had last year. Um, oh, by the way, I think every team needs to have a cut down uh, video of the office when players are being cut and uh, how the players react and how the coaches or the coach and the owner, whoever's in the office that's cutting these players. Mm -hmm. uh, I think every team needs to have a clip of that or their own little seg in there to see how these players react and how professional a lot of them are because every time i see on the hard knocks episode with detroit uh these players were respectable and they were excited yeah. even though they were getting cut so it seemed to be pretty cool little idea that the nfl i'm sure that's part of the reason why they do hard knocks but anyways let's get into the north so we had last year we had green bay over under last year was 10 we both picked the over they finished at 13 Minnesota mm -hmm. was at nine. Uh, they finished at eight. I picked the under. You picked uh, even to be at nine. Uh, Chicago, we stayed away from their over under was seven and a half. They hit. They were at six. And then Detroit was four and a half last year. And we both picked the under. Uh, and they finished at three last year. So we were pretty yeah, solid so on close. that one. Mm -hmm. um, picked the two. Um, but this year could be a different story. You know, Aaron Rodgers comes back, always the mm -hmm. NFC North division. What does he say? He, he, he owns the, uh, owns the I NFC own North. I own you. Owns the NFC North. His, his confidence is not lacking there. I own you. Um, but are there any key acquisitions or losses from any of these teams that you see that could, you know, jump up you know i no. i mean i know packers they lose Devontae adams and mark his values uh stanley also equanimous equanimous st brown they lost the linebackers to darius smith um you know they put in place sammy watkins and then they got jaron reed from the chiefs i believe the defensive line there um didn't get aaron Rodgers a receiver um mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you can't really, you know, still have Lazard Is there. he really, though? I think so. He went on his, what is it, Hiawaska? Hey, Got his Hiawaska cleaning again. He, better, did it, uh, he, did he it. better be high as hell seeing all kind of receivers out there. If I remember correctly or heard correctly, he did the same thing a few years ago. And look mm -hmm. what happened after he did that. He won two consecutive MVPs. So mm. just getting it back in the fresh, getting the – fully loaded attention and uh mind right back in for Aaron Rodgers but uh you know I think we talked a lot about him last year um you know you still have Matt LaFleur at the helm uh leading them and they seem to be getting long did the, was it Nathaniel Hackett was that the yes. uh, offensive coordinator that they yeah, lost by so the way. we'll see how that goes but oh come on man you can't be doing this dude look he's always had nobody to throw to okay always but he always had Devontae Adams, all reliable. And then he'd fill in with these other guys and hope that they would catch the ball. Now all of those other guys are gone, bro. All of them and Devontae Adams. Okay, so now you're left with uh, Randall Cobb and uh, Lazard and some dudes you never heard of. And he's already complaining on the record with a camera in his face. These dudes ain't catching. So that's going to be a big problem. They're leaving major, uh, major wins on, on the table this year. I see it. We know what happened to them last year. Minnesota, they won the division, clear cut. Minnesota fell off due to injuries and then underperformed after that. Detroit was out here doing exactly what they said they were doing, being scrappy. They had the one tie this year. What is more scrappy than being the one team that tied somebody? 
Okay. So they're out here on the come up. And then the biggest problem, the biggest exodus out of this division came in Chicago. So how all nobody's expecting for Justin Fields to do anything. Okay. Everybody left in this division with a name, basically left Chicago. Okay. Allen Robinson, gone. Khalil Mack, gone. Akeem Hicks, gone. That whole defense is gone. Deion Bush, gone. Everybody gone. Okay. Anybody with a name in this whole division, aside of Aaron Rodgers, is gone from this division. Okay. So that's going to open the door up. It's going to leave this dude, uh, Justin Fields, out in the water. It's going to be a cold game to watch him. Hopefully he can just learn something and then maybe get out of there with his life. Um, Cause I don't think that they're defending the dude. We've watched that. They are not defending the dude. He's been taking hard hits and that's been from preseason of last year and on the record to big, huge hits in the regular season uh, last year. I just hope he don't get killed out there, man. But the Vikings, man, that is the team that with the least amount of losses, they got rid of the people they didn't want, they didn't need, and brought in a couple guys. And they're just going to try to be healthy this year and chase down Aaron Rodgers and catch him while he's weak, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan. I mean, I, I think Green Bay, you know, he, I say that they, they still reign supreme in the nfc north but i don't think they get to 13 again i think they're going to drop off i mean i it, uh, 10 and a half i i they, they might get 11 uh there in green bay uh yeah. minnesota's going to be interesting to see they got the new head coach uh kevin o'connell i don't even know where the hell he came from the Rams, but they got a new boy. head coach there um but i mean Rams, Cousins, OC, boy have some respect that's what i'm saying that's that, this is gonna kirk, be the squad man is kirk cousins you know gonna be the answer is it his time to shine and and make the uh the vikings a, a pretending potential playoff team with dalvin cook um you know and then justin jefferson but after justin jefferson and dalvin cook who do you have i mean adam Thielen. Yeah, Thielen. That's all you need. You just need all of them there, bro. And look at the schedule makeup has dealt you the hand of both East side teams. You get the AFC East and the NFC East soft package. Okay. So all you really need to do is have Kirk cousins. there, looking remotely hungry, ready to throw passes to these dudes. And you're going to be good to go. Cause the biggest thing, biggest thing that they have in their pocket is they're going to play a couple teams, yeah, you know I'm saying that ain't even want that one only one less than four games last year. So if you look at, check this out. Follow me now. The Minnesota Vikings strength of schedule number twenty. Green Bay Packers strength of schedule number twenty two. You believe that? Both of them. With both of them having to now, this is based on last year's schedule, but I'm saying both of them playing both of playing their division and two other divisions that have two top soft teams in there. Minnesota is going to be able to get there. So for that reason, okay, I am not out like uh, Shark Tank. For those reasons, this is going to end up as a tie. Eleven wins, Green Bay. Eleven wins. Minnesota. You have to wait to see who I pick on the division. Though. Eleven so wins. So that's and a, eleven that's a, wins. So that's an over. I think that's an over on both of them. But the smarter yeah. bet, smarter bet clearly would be on Minnesota because you'd have the tenth game in there to secure. You got an extra point um, if you wanted to play that. And I looked. If you did play that as of yesterday, when I looked, if you played the over Minnesota nine and a half, it's even money plus 100 the um yeah i, I mean i i still think like i said i i agree with the green bay at 11 i'm not sold on minnesota yet so i'm just gonna leave that one alone but uh my heart my uh my force pick is chicago under uh six and a half they finished at six last year i don't know how and mm. then um i'm taking detroit and the over six and a half uh Smart. for uh uh, the force over pick um, just because I like, I, I mean, I think they're doing the right things there from what I've seen. I'm, I got sucked into the hard knocks and the of believing and the hype 
and Hard all that. knocks will make you feel like they got a good seven wins. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm in there, and I do like, you know, they're they're, you know, you're they got your boy Goof still, and uh, a little uh, shout right. out to the week one preview that we have to do. But I believe Jared Goof is uh five zero and one against the spread on opening uh week one. So. Not good one. And see, peep this out. Peep out this tidbit for the Lions in their favor. After week 10, they play seven games in eight weeks against teams that didn't make the playoffs last year. So, therefore, the after Detroit, week 10, yep. Detroit, therefore, Detroit Lions strength of schedule number 28. Ooh. Softest schedule. So, for there the record, go. since I didn't mention it on, since I didn't mention it last division, every team in last division, I forgot to mention that was one of my notes. Every team in the last division has the weakest schedule. Remember, I talked about how their schedule makeup is and who their competition is. Giants, Eagles, Cowboys, Commanders, bottom four, strength of schedule, softest schedule. Giants, Eagles, Cowboys, Commanders. Cowboys, Commanders. So, and then you have the the, uh, Lions outside looking in. So that's going to be nice for them. The thing about Green Bay that I saw, I'm going to point this out then. Uh, we can look at questions if you had any about these divisions, but look at Green Bay situation. Look, okay. After they go to London in week five, okay, they're going to fly home and then they have their home game. Okay. We're against the Jets. Yeah. And then they go on a three game road trip after that. No bye week after going to London. When you yeah, go when overseas, there? nine times out of ten, bye weeks don't start till week seven. Yeah, and they don't get theirs till week fourteen. That's right. So, traditional or, or as tradition, Jacksonville when they go to Wembley, this kind of thing, wherever they yep. go, whichever stadium they use, they get that bye week next. Atlanta when they go over there, they get that bye week next. Chargers, blah blah blah. They ain't get that bye week, man. So that was one of the things I saw in the schedule that was, that might be, you know, the schedules, you know, uh, you know, they got some soft stuff at the beginning. Cause basically if they're not going to be home uh, at the end of the season or, at, or during that time, where are these home games going to be? They're at the front of the season. So the first three out of four in the front of the season is at home. So they can get off to a quick start, but look at who those are against. So uh, those are some, those are little tidbits, man. And I think uh, the only questions I have is, is Lazard your wide receiver number one? Uh, can he is he gonna get fed like a wide receiver number one for for Aaron Rodgers? Well, I'm and, still and, looking to. I mean, I I well, obviously, yeah, I think he's gonna have to be. But you, the, you know, to. remember remember that uh, the Cobb was still the the go to, and he they Aaron Rodgers got Cobb from Houston last year um, for himself. However, he hasn't seen the field and he was hurt the whole time. So yeah. is Cobb healthy? That's kind of one of those things, you know, I want to know what's going on with him because that could help you out too a little bit. What's my man's name? That's the tight end that I always forget that he made famous. Oh, uh, their, new, their new tight end that he made famous recently. Damn it. I always Tanyan? forget his name. Tanyan. Tanyan, yeah. So you still, got, you still got hands out there. You got targets out there. It's just yeah. Lazard and DeGruy, has or whatever to his be. name is too. You have to treat Lazard and target him like a number one. Like he should have been like fantasy number one of if you had, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay, you're going to try to target him in fantasy draft because you're thinking he's got to get these targets. So that that's it's got to happen because that's just the way that they play. And then you got the Rams transplant, Kevin McConnell. We talked about that new HC. He gets a shot at, at Cousins if he can flip that script and get the uh, the the, uh, the goof out of him like he did uh with goof maybe we could uh we can make something happen there and does roquan uh smith cause up some shit and he tried to leave chicago too because he wants out too so everybody oh, yeah. wants he out forgot. yeah i think he finally i don't know if he signed did he sign did no he, he just uh, yeah he no he's good for contract because he's oh he's he just, just trying to get out yeah he just wants out and he just didn't want to practice he was showing up to practice that new thing they were doing showing up to practice but not practicing right so yeah get, so he couldn't get fine so but anyway, yeah, that's those guys, man. You got anything else on them? You want to hear on them? No, I think so. Let's roll to the NFC um, South. 